karate came from Japan, but it came from Okinawa, but it came from China, but it was already in Okinawa before that, because it came from Japan. Hello everyone, I'm Tim. Did you know there was karate in Okinawa before it came from China? So, we all know karate came from Japan, where it was officially named, well, karate. And we also all know that it was introduced in Japan from Okinawa, the birthplace of. Now, before I continue, if you haven't already, please take a moment to subscribe. You can do so by clicking the button below this video. It'll just take a second, so I'll wait. Thanks. I suspect many of you know that before that it came from China, as it got translated from such Chinese martial arts like Fujian, uh, White Crane, etc. Now what if I told you there was already karate in Okinawa before it got handed down from China? In an interview in the Okinawa Times of 1957, two of the biggest names in karate of the second half of the 20th century, namely Nagamine Shoshin and Chibana Choshin. Hmm. I just realized how similar their first names are, had a conversation and the subject of karate's origins came up. Nagamine said, well, karate existed even before it got handed down from China. To which Chibana replied, about this, according to conversations with my teacher Ito Suanku sensei who passed away in 1916 at the age of 85, originally in Okinawa there was the so-called tea. This also becomes clear from heroic sagas, such as of Oni Oshiro. It is said that karate entered later, when the tea of Chatanyara and the Kempo of Todi Sakugawa merged into one and became karate. So this seems to point out Sakugawa's art had its base in China, and Chatanyara was Okinawan in origin. One name sticks out, however, and that name is Oni Oshiro. Who was this man? For this, we have to dive even deeper into the history of Ryukyu. We travel back to the 15th century and meet up with Ufugusku Kenyu, who was also known as Uni Ufugusku. This name is pronounced as Oni Oshiro in Japan and means Oshiro the Demon or Oshiro the Ogre, but not like Shrek. He was called that because of his enormous size. Reportedly, he was almost six foot tall which is pretty big for an Okinawan in the 15th century, it's even big for an Okinawan today. Now apart from his size, he was also known as one of the earliest Okinawan martial arts masters. And as a descendant of Rukyun royalty, he was also an aristocrat. As a martial arts master, he practiced unarmed Okinawan grappling, and bujutsu, and was a master of kenjutsu. Now these last two arts should ring a bell, as they are both Japanese terms. For those of you who are surprised at this, we have to point out that martial arts in Okinawa in those times were essentially based in Japan and came to Okinawa even as early as the 12th century. Back to Oshiro. Because he was part of nobility and a great martial arts master, he served as a protector to the throne. There was an ambitious ruler in that time, named Amawari, not to be confused with the Okinawan drink named Awamori, who was bent on taking the throne over from King Sho Taikyu. In an attempt at usurpation, the king's father-in-law, a powerful ruler in his own right, was given the task of stopping Amawari. This failed catastrophically, however, and the king's father-in-law had no other choice than to commit seppuku. After this, it was Oshiro who led a military campaign against the forces of Amawari. This campaign was successful, and it led to the end of Amawari's attempt at dethroning King Sho. Oni Oshiro personally executed Amawari with his katana. In recognition of this military and martial skills and achievements, and of course his loyalty to the king, Oshiro was given Chibana Gusuku, the castle of Chibana, and the hand of the king's daughter in marriage. Not too much else is known about the life of this first great Okinawan martial arts master, but it appears he did fall by his own hand when King Sho Toku was killed around 1469. His life reminds me of that of a samurai in action. 
Oshiro's legacy lives on today in the likes of the Mabuni family and also in the Hokama family. Both are branches of Oni Oshiro's lineage. If you want to learn more about Oni Oshiro, I can recommend Andreas Quast's book about this legendary fighter. Next week, we'll talk about the man behind the famous Kada Chatanyara. So there you have it. Karate came from Japan, but it came from Okinawa, but it came from China, but it was already in Okinawa before that, because it came from Japan. <laughs> Still with me? Did you guys hear about Oshiro the Demon before? What did you think about this little dive into deep karate history? Leave a comment down below. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. I'll leave you for now. Have a wonderful day and as always, thanks for watching.